Good morning, everyone. Good morning to all the, or good afternoon, I should say, uh, to all the Scarlet Knights out there. My name is Priscilla Santana, and I am the exercises medicine coach at Rutgers um, through the Rutgers Recreation Department and Kinesiology Department. Today, I will be presenting on how to train like an Olympian. And so really, today's talk will really emphasize simple things. They sound simple, um, but in reality, Olympians do use these methods and techniques to develop their overall strategy um, going into competition. And so I really do hope you take and learn something today. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the question and answer chat box. Um, for today, we are going to be covering um, setting goals, how Olympians set goals and how we can set goals of our own and be able to break them down. We're gonna be talking about a method called, called cross training um, in which Olympians use as a way to get their physique ready for their competition. And I'm going to talk about two methods that I use with my students um, who come to my coaching appointments um, to make it simple and easy and um, be able to use it in your own daily life. Um, we're gonna be talking about the importance of other lifestyle factors such as nutrition and sleep and how that helps reduce injury and the importance of mental health. We'll also be talking about accountability and mind over matter, being able to find motivation in staying with your program. And so setting goals, usually Olympians set goals to either break a world record or to win a gold medal or a medal in general. And to be able to set these goals, they have to have a big picture goal, but be able to break it down within time periods and into smaller goals that are obtainable. Um, for example, a, an athlete may want to run a marathon or is running a marathon and a marathon is 26 miles. In order to train for that, maybe they begin to, for their first two weeks, run 10 miles and then they or three miles and then they increase it to 10 miles until they reach the 26 mile goal and so finding ways to break that up is um, a strategy they use another strategy that um, they use that I also like to implement when I um, train or help others train is SMART goals. Specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. And we've all may have heard of this method before, but it's actually really useful if we find ways to implement it. Um, research has shown um, in UK that when we have a big picture goal, such as I want to lose 10 pounds or I want to gain 10 pounds, a lot of people do not achieve it. But if they were to say, I am going to schedule my workouts on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 11 a.m., that is specific, that is measurable, that is achievable, realistic, and timely. And so that is um, being able to break it down, simplify it, and have um, a path to make sure it is obtainable. Now we're going to talk about the method of cross training. And so what is cross training? It is an exercise regimen that uses several modes of training to develop a specific component of fitness. For Olympians, again, that may be helping them to break a world record or um, finding a way to get to the gold medal. For us, it may be different um, if we're trying to strengthen our body or gain muscle or lose weight, how can we use cross training um, to do that? And so with the benefits of cross training, it helps to reduce risk of injury, which is really important, which is another reason why Olympians use it because it adds variety to their week and throughout their program. Um, 
It also improves total fitness because you're, you're incorporating cardio and strength training. And so by doing that, you're stimulating different parts of your body and allowing your body to adapt differently. Um, and it also allows you to practice different sports or different activities that you're not used to practicing every day. So for example, what the picture shows is cycling or maybe one day you do yoga or another day you're lifting weights or Olympic weightlifting, whatever that is to give you variety so you don't get bored and you continue and stay in your program um, to enhance your exercise um, adherence. And so how can we add it into our daily life and into our own program? Olympians are more sport specific, right? And so they have trainers, they have um, maybe coaches that help them um, dive deeper into their program. But for our purposes, for our daily life and what we do to make sure we're staying consistent and reaching our goal, whatever that goal may be, the physical activity guidelines and the fit principle are perfect for us to be able to achieve our goals. And so what are the physical activity guidelines? The physical activity guidelines are a checklist and they basically help you for the end of your week to assess, did I achieve what I was supposed to achieve? And so adults should aim for at least 150 minutes of moderate activity in 10 minutes or more, in bouts of 10 minutes or more a week. Moderate activity can include walking, it can include um, going to um, the grocery store and lifting heavy bags. It can include um, smaller group classes where you're doing um, balance training or anything like that that is more simplified and lightweight. Whereas if you can't achieve 150 minutes, then achieving 75 minutes of vigorous activity um, or a mixture of moderate and vigorous activity for the week. So if you cannot achieve 150 minutes, striving for the 75 minutes is important. And the 75 minutes incorporates the body weight training, the weight lifting, the group classes that emphasize um, strength training or circuit training, um, spin, um, anything that is going to overload your body excessively through the week. Um, and all adults should get in at least two days a week of, of, of muscular strengthening activity or of muscular conditioning. And the reason we use those terms is because muscular strengthening or muscular conditioning is a broader term that covers a wide variety of activities. It does not only have to be in the gym specifically. And so for us, that may be exercising with weights, that may be yoga, Tabata, Pilates, or again, for anybody who may not have as much time, but needs to find some way to move, going to the stores and grocery shopping and lifting heavy things or gardening or manual labor work um, allows your body to go through adaptations as well. Um, and then the last thing that's not listed on the image is um, your daily steps. And we really emphasize getting in 10,000 steps a day for 70,000 steps a week. And so that is a daily goal where it's from the time you wake up to the time you go to bed, can you achieve those steps? And so during COVID, many of us may not have been getting 10,000 steps. And so research has shown that as long as you're getting over 6,000 steps, that you are still becoming physically active. And so if you're getting less than 6,000, my uh, advice to you would be to see where you start at. If you're getting 2,000, 3,000, make 6,000 your goal. Once you start reaching 6,000, then reach to 10,000. And that'll at least give you small steps to get to the bigger goal. Um, the next are the FIT principles. And the FIT principle is more related to structured exercise found in the weight room or in a gym. And so frequency, 
how often you exercise, intensity, how hard you exercise, time, how long you exercise, and type, what kind of exercise you do. And so with frequency, establishing the number of days that you're trying to complete um, is really important. And Olympians do the same thing. They give themselves a timeline and they check how many days a week must I be training to see the benefits that I need to see leading up to competition day. And they take into account um, their practice, their extra sessions, recovery time, how hard they're working, which is intensity, we'll talk about, um, their goals, the type of workouts they'll be doing. They take all that into account um, to figure out how many days they're working out. For us specifically, when it comes to cardio respiratory training or any type of training that has to do with running, um, using a bike, swimming, walking, um, the minimum requirement is three days a week to see benefits. And as you increase that or get used to that schedule, you can increase to five or six sessions. And so if you're first starting two to three days a week, but as you go on and continue, then you can continue adding days. For resistance training, that varies as well. Because of the intensity or because of the type of strength training that you're doing, what body parts you're working, and the recovery needed for that, that'll determine um, how many days you should be working. So usually three to four days is sufficient because we want to allow enough recovery time. And so as long as you begin being consistent with your program and getting used to your program, you can assess that and either add or take away. For intensity, um, that defines the amount of effort that should be invested in your training. And so there has to be a balance with finding enough intensity to overload your body so it could see adaptations. And Olympians do the same thing. And they use many methods to determine intensity, whether it's by percentages, whether it's by a scale, one to 10, 10 being you're working very hard, where they're about to pass out, and one where it's very light, it has no effect on them at all. They monitor their heart rate, which we'll also talk about. And um, they can also just, by increasing weight on your barbell, adding five pounds, 10 pounds, whatever that may be, that's also increasing intensity um, in your program. For time, how long you should be exercising for, um, research has shown that individuals with lower fitness levels should aim to maintain their heart rate um, in a specific target rate zone for 20 to 30 minutes of working out. But as your fitness levels increase, you can increase the session to 45 to 60 minutes. Um, specifically with cardio training, it's important to note that anything done after an hour, you're just going to see diminishing returns. There really is no extra added benefit for doing um, extra cardio training. And so if you keep it within 20 to 30 minutes and um, you are doing um, cycling or you're on a treadmill, recognize that also 20 to 30 minutes does not also mean that you're taking it lightly. Maybe you're, by keeping that time short, you're adding intensity on that. So when you're, for, when you're first starting, you can start at 20 to 30 minutes. As you're improving, you can go to 45 to 60 minutes. But intensity can also be modified where you can keep it at 20 to 30 minutes and just kick up the pace a little bit. Um, for resistance training, again, that depends on the type of workout. Beginners can start at 20 to 30 minutes. Um, they can get in um, you know, some type of resistance training where they're just learning the machines or learning how to use dumbbells, body weight training, whatever that may be, 20 to 30 minutes may be sufficient. But as your levels keep getting better, as you're getting stronger, you're able to do more, that can be increased to 45 to 60 minutes. 
And lastly, the type of training or exercise also plays a role. And that's based on your goals that help you target what type of training do you want to do? Would you like to do circuit training? Would you like to do training um, specifically with barbells, like Olympic weightlifting? Um, all that will depend on your goals and what type of adaptation you want to see for your body. Do you want to gain muscle? Do you want to lose weight? Um, so that's all important to take into account. And the biggest two variables that are manipulated in your program um, are intensity and time. People are either always adding weight or adding um, more volume or they're adding time to their workout. And so one thing we're learning most recently, if a lot of us are keeping up with the news, are a lot of the other important factors that Olympians have to take into account. And so the importance of mental health, of nutrition, and of sleep. Um, mental health plays a huge role in our general well-being. The Mayo Clinic reports that nearly one in five adults have a mental illness in any given year. And mental illnesses can range in issue and severity from anxiety and depression to eating, eating disorders and schizophrenia. And so it's important for our body to be able to function properly and um, to be able to go about our day. And it can even, when our mind and our body are in sync or aligned, that can also help us um, increase our life expectancy because we're not as stressed out or worried. And so it's really important that even though we're realizing mental health is important, it is still often overlooked. And so we need to be able to realize what is best for us and our bodies to be able to um, perform to our best ability. And again, we've seen that with um, in the recent news with Olympians. Um, the next thing is nutrition. Um, in order to maintain a healthy mind and body, proper nutrition is essential. Chances of increased levels of anxiety and depression are multiplied with a poor diet. And so in order to avoid um, mental and physical consequences, um, trying to incorporate the healthy proteins, the vegetables, the fruits, um, the whole grains are all going to be very important. And then maybe reducing the butter, the processed meats, the flours, um, that'll, the added sugars, that will all um, play a role as well in trying to keep your body in sync um, when it comes to your physical and mental health. And then lastly, sleep. Poor sleep habits can be directly linked to stress, anxiety, and depression. The National Sleep Foundation recommends that adults should get an average of seven to nine hours of sleep. Specifically for Olympians who achieve seven to nine hours of sleep every night, they will see improvements in greater strength, accuracy, speed, and reaction than those who do not. And so sleep can really make or break your performance. And that goes for us as well. Um, during sleep, specifically deep sleep, the physical challenges um, that we face during the day are all being taken as we sleep. And for those who don't know, when we're sleeping, that's when our body goes through changes the most. That is when our muscles are growing. That is when we are adapting. And so it is really important that you strive for that seven to nine hours every night if you want to see your performance improve and your goals achieved. And so if you are having trouble um, getting enough sleep at night, there are some tips that I do have here. And so it's relaxing before bed, whether that's meditating, praying, listening to music without words, anything that allows your body to calm down and bring down your heart rate is a really great way to get yourself to fall asleep. 
Another way is setting a schedule before bedtime. So every night telling yourself, I'm going to bed at 11 p.m. Um, so that way you're keeping yourself accountable and held to that time. Um, another thing is before bed, decreasing caffeine intake. And lastly, shutting off or logging off of social media at least one hour before bed. Another thing that is really important is accountability. Again, we've talked about how Olympians schedule their workouts. They schedule their plan planning, uh, their programming for the entire year. Um, once that entire year is broken down, it's broken down into shorter phases that allow them to go week by week. And so thinking, think of scheduling as a meeting with yourself. When choosing the days and times to work out, think about when is the time you have the most energy. Um, so that way you can complete your workout during that time. Um, the second thing is training with others. Olympians understand that they can't do it by themselves. Although we see them individually um, just competing for their event, there is a greater team behind them that allows them to succeed and be successful. And so it's no different for us. Um, we must have a way to be able to communicate with those around us, those who are close to us, whether it's a, a parent, a family friend, a best friend, um, train with them or ask them to hold you accountable. Hey, these are my days that I'm working out. I need you to check in with me. Um, and then lastly, using wearable devices. Um, wearable devices give you the opportunity to challenge yourself through the day. And you can get one um, using, you know, the Fitbit, the Apple Watch. A lot of people use an app on their phone. And so we've talked about the daily goal of reaching 10,000 steps. Um, using any type of um, wearable device allows you to monitor that and monitor any type of goal. So if maybe it's not 10,000 steps that you're worried about, maybe it's your heart rate through your workout. Wearable devices give you the opportunity to hold yourself accountable to make sure you're reaching your, your target heart rate. Um, in addition, if you're working out with others, it's a great way to compete with others as well. If you're all on the same map, you're all able to track yourselves, you're able to see, oh, so-and-so did this today. I need to make sure I go do my workout as well. And so there's many ways we can use technology the most important thing I would say, though, if you're keeping track of data, is it's great. It's great information, but don't get too caught up in it as well. Don't overwhelm yourself. It's just nice to have it on the side to make sure that it's helping you obtain your goal. Lastly, um, mind over matter, being able to find motivation. I found a quote that said, motivation is your brain's way of keeping you going when times get tough. And so finding ways to stay motivated is really important because we know with us, whether it's academics, whether it's jobs, whether it's families, time commitments, our personal life, whatever that may be, um, all consumes our daily life. And so we may not be a world champion or Olympian that has so many hours in a day to train. And so we have to be mindful of that and stay motivated during the times that are tough. And so how can we do that? Well, research shows that Olympians who reach the top, uh, reach the top and stay there often use their friends, their family, and the fact that they get to represent their country as motivation. But even something as simple as picking their own music to train has been shown to continue to motivate them in their um, program and in their training leading up to competition days. Um, whether it's music that is uplifting, whether it's positivity, maybe it's actually um, a motivational speaker, whatever that may be for you, 
use it to your advantage to allow you or to help you work out in, in your, throughout your week. Um, another thing that athletes and Olympians do is choose a powerful quote every morning. They have a powerful quote that they look at every day um, and they put it somewhere they can see it. For me, I put mine behind my door and I look at it every morning and it reminds me, okay, today is gonna be a challenging day, but I know because I've read this, my mind is right and I can get through my day. And so putting on that Olympic attitude, finding a quote that uh, resonates with you, that'll empower you and keep you motivated is gonna be really important. And lastly, photos of success um, to remind yourself of your accomplishment, whether it's a past accomplishment, um, whether you play a recreational sport and you guys won a championship, um, maybe you, you're setting a personal record for yourself, um, lifting a heavier weight um, in your squat or your bench press, whatever that may be, take a picture of it and always have it with you to remind yourself of that feeling of when you won because that'll always keep you motivated to go for more, do more and have fun with it. Don't forget that this is all, um, it's all great and training is an amazing thing. Being able to manipulate your body is an amazing thing, but having fun and being able to do it with people around you is also gonna help you get there. And so I really like this. Your body can stand almost anything. It's your mind that you have to convince. And so I hope I helped you with just some ways that you can convince your mind to keep you going. Um, and so to finish off, the most important thing in the Olympic games is not winning, but taking part. The essential thing in life is not conquering, but fighting well. Um, so the big picture of this whole presentation is yes, these Olympians, they're elite. Um, they do things that maybe some of us have never done before. And we see that and we look up to them for that. But winning is not the main goal. Um, it's taking part. It's seeing that it's a bigger thing than just them. And the same thing goes for us. We know that we get busy in our lives. We know that it can be hard to find time to move. It can be hard to find time to exercise. But the fact that we're fighting through it and we're telling ourselves we can do it, that's what's most important. And if you can come out like that, that is what success is in helping you to stay motivated in being active and reaching your goals. Here is my contact info for anyone who's interested in contacting me directly. I am the exercises medicine coach. And so um, we do appointments. Um, I would have to double check with alumni how the system would work. Um, but even if um, for whatever reason, we can't get an appointment personally, send me an email. I have no problem at all answering anybody's questions. And before we move on to the workout, I do want to answer some questions that I did receive. Uh, the first question is, what diet do you suggest for the best results? And I've had this question asked to me many times before. I don't have an answer for you specifically in terms of what diet is best. What I can tell you is that you have to find what works for you, but make sure everything is done in balance and moderation and it's good food, right? So the vegetables, the whole grains, the proteins, if you're not a meat eater, finding those replacements um, for the protein is going to be really important. So it's not that one diet is best or one diet is ideal. It's just finding what works for you. And to find that out, maybe going to a dietitian or um, a nutritionist um, can help you, or even your primary care doctor can help you to establish that based on your weight, based on your goals, whatever that may be. Um, but is there a specific diet 
for best results, no, I, I wouldn't say there is just one diet. Um, why did you choose to become a coach and a trainer? Um, it actually started way back when, when I was in the eighth grade. Um, so that seems pretty young, but really I have always loved sports. I've played sports my whole life and I knew I wanted to do something with children population. And so one thing I'd love to do in my own future is work with obese children. Um, but currently as a coach, I love working with the college student population and I also work with athletes. Um, one thing that I probably should have said at the beginning that I didn't say is I'm currently in Texas right now I'm studying sport physiology and I work with the women's basketball team and the volleyball team and I help train them. And so um, doing that, but also being the exercises medicine coach at Rutgers, I have the best of both worlds. And I've always been passionate about how the body moves and just the different things we're able to do. It's not an easy field, it's not an easy track, um, I can't say it's been easy, but have I had fun with it and do I enjoy it? Yes, very much. Do you have tips for unmotivated individuals who cannot stick to a regimen? Yes. Um, so like we talked about um, scheduling it, one thing I do when I sit down with my students who come to me for the coaching appointments we literally look at their schedule for the whole week. If we see consistencies, we, we say, okay, this is consistent. We know from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. you work. What are you doing before 8 a.m.? And what are you doing after work, right? And so we break down the schedules. We break down um, into details, hour by hour. I have no problem doing that with anybody. And so we find the gaps and where they have the most energy to be able to fulfill a workout. And so that has been what I've noticed the biggest motivator for them because we come up with the days and we come up with the times and they hold themselves accountable to sticking to those days and sticking to those times. Um, another thing is if you're a person who loves rewards, Find something that you haven't done in a while, a hobby. Um, I know one student loved playing the guitar and they had not touched the guitar in so long that we made it a reward. They were a student, they had you know 18 credits, but at the end of the month, if they were to complete one month of working out, then they were able to enjoy some time playing the guitar. And so rewards, and rewards are different for everybody. Um, for someone else, uh, we journaled their workouts. She journaled it, she saw um, what she improved on and what she wanted to work on or get better at. And through that, she was able to see her progress and um, continue moving forward and staying consistent. So journaling your workouts is another great way um, to stay motivated. And then again, choosing, their, choosing your playlist. I had another student who created a new playlist every day um, just to work out. And so find what works for you. Um, and if any of those ideas catch your attention, try them, try them out. Give yourself um, to be open to trying new things to figure out what really works for you to stay motivated. For me personally, um, I would listen to a motivational video before my workout. So that way my mind would be prepared for the workout. And that's what I did for a really, really long time. Um, are there any other questions? Oh yes, here we go. Do you have examples, templates of a workout journal to track your progress? Um, I, do I don't have a template per se. I really just encourage if you had a small notebook um, to write, you know, the date, the type of workout you did, um, the exercises, 
which exercises you thought you did really well, which ones you think you did not do well, and how can you improve that for next time? Those were the questions I really had um, my students answer if they decided to journal. Um, do you have preferences for how to split weightlifting? Yeah, so um, I did for, for some time when I was at Rutgers and found myself only being able to work out maybe three times a week, um, I did total body workouts for me personally. But I've also, when I've created workouts, depending on the person, depending on the schedule, I would give them maybe upper body one day, lower body the next day. Um, sometimes if they wanted to work a specific body part, I would emphasize that more than others. So it really, based on your question, it really depends on your goals and what you're trying to achieve to figure out what you um, want to do. Okay, any others? Well, I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Now we're going to switch to the workout. So if you have um, comfortable shoes on, comfortable clothing on, water um, available to you, then we can get started with that. And let me see, I'm going to share the music. Make sure that the ball is good. So begin getting yourself ready to work out. Make sure you're in a clear area with good space. We have good, good amount of time. So we can, it is going to be about a 10 minute workout. Um, so we'll do three rounds, 30 seconds of five exercises. We're gonna go through a warm up first. We're gonna go through a warm up first. And I will show you the movement. I just wanna make sure you guys will see everything. Here we go. Okay, awesome. So I believe All of me. Okay, awesome. So it's gonna be five exercises, 30 seconds each exercise. And as we go through the warm up, I will show you each exercise. And then once we're ready to begin, we'll start. Okay. So first, I want you to be moving, I want you to just march in place. And as you march in place, I will tell you what we're going to be doing. So just march in place. You can increase your tempo if you want, moving your arms. But in our first movement, keep marching. Our first movement is going to be a squat and press. So we're pushing our hips back and we're extending our arms in the air. 
There we go. And as we get ready, we're going to just do a light cool down. Um, just a light cool down. We're gonna do a few stretches just so your body, your heart rate all just comes down. And then at the end, um, we have a couple minutes left. I think I will be able to say a few words at the end. So. Let's just get into the stretching and then I'll answer any more questions. Okay, awesome. So the first thing we're gonna do is just breathe. Come up, arms up, hold it in. Release, do it again. Release. Take another deep one. Release. Good. Shake it out. Shake it out. We're just going to move our neck around. And we're going to go the other way.
Good, we're gonna make our way down to the ground, nice and slow. And we're just gonna move side to side. Just think about what that workout felt like, how it felt, how your body's feeling. Move it to, the, uh, to your right, just hold it and breathe. And switch to the other side and breathe. And good, and come back to the middle. Slowly come up, slowly come up. Good, and stretch your arms out a little bit. Come the other way. Good, overhead. Switch. Good, and shake it out. Okay, awesome. So now that we are calmed a little bit, I'll be glad to answer any more questions that I see. Um, I am not on LinkedIn, actually. I am in the works of making an account, but currently I am not on LinkedIn. Um, thank you, Jessica, for joining this session. Um, I can share my contact info again. I'll put it in the chat and I'll make sure the thank you email that's sent out has it as well. Um, but I really just wanna say thank you to everyone who participated. My program, Exercises Medicine, the Exercises Medicine team, my, my supervisor, Stacy Trukowski, we all thank you for joining us today, the, the Rutgers Alumni Association for giving us this platform to be with you all. We really encourage movement, right? So we talked about how to train as an Olympian, but really the overall arching goal is getting everyone to move in some way, finding activities that they enjoy and um, being able to help you all in any way I can. And so thank you all for today. Thank you all for joining. And I hope you learned something. Thank you so much.